clear from day one that this is a moment for reform for the Met and the ghastliness in this report is, uh, is, is a salutary reminder of that. Uh, we've achieved an awful lot so far, we've built our, our plan and we've started to make some changes. Around the toxic culture, which is a big part of this report, uh, we've um, strengthened our counter-corruption capabilities, we're um, sacking officers at a faster rate, we're suspending more officers, and I'm still pushing the Prime Minister and Home Secretary for more powers to be able to help me move more quickly in dealing with some of the toxic individuals. Helpfully, I know the majority of my colleagues are up for this, I'm getting more information from them, um, and that's helping us deal with the people who are the problems. More widely, we're strengthening our neighbourhood policing, we're improving our service to victims, we're growing our rape detections, we're step by step making progress. I'm not glib about this. Louise Casey's report is a galvanising moment and there's an awful lot to do. But step by step, we will reform the policing of London. And I hope Londoners work with us on this mission. Um, you mentioned a galvanising moment. If I take you back nearly a quarter of a century to the McPherson report, would you say the Casey report is at that level, is even more damning, or is not at the same level as the McPherson report? Uh, uh, sort of making specific comparisons is slightly invidious, but I think it is of the same magnitude. We have to see this as the same magnitude of moment. And we also have to reflect on, regardless of all the positive changes made in policing over a couple of decades, why haven't we dug deep enough to make the change that's required? And the failures to do that are horrifically illustrated by the stories, by the examples, by the accounts in this report. The thing that makes me optimistic is that the evidence in this report is almost entirely from, from my people, from my colleagues. They care deeply about this, they're frustrated, they want us to be better. And I think because of their motivation, with the right leadership, we will succeed. Now, back in 1999, in the McPherson report, the Met was said to be institutionally racist. We hear, 24 years on, it is again institutionally racist, and that is on your watch but you have issue with those words. Explain why. So first of all, Nick, I should be really clear to your listeners. I absolutely expect, accept the diagnosis and the detail in the report. We have racists, we have misogynists, we have homophobes. And unfortunately, we have systemic failings that create bias. We have management failings and cultural failings that add to that. So that diagnosis that Louise Casey gives, I fully accept. The, the issue about the label, I understand her using the term and I, I'm not, um, I, 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 I have no comment to make on that. The challenge is it has different definitions, different understandings, and I think it's ambiguous. And you'll have picked up on your show over, over the years. It's also become quite politicised in its interpretation and I need to stay out of that space. But none of that is any sort of stepping back from or avoiding the facts in this report, the diagnosis and the scale of the job at hand. So your issue is with the word institutionally, not with the word racist, just to clarify. Yeah, completely, yes. We have racist, misogynist, homophobes in the organisation. We have systemic failings and we're going to tackle them. When Baroness Casey was asked if the Met could have more officers like the serial rapist Carrick and the Cousins, she replies, quote, I cannot sufficiently assure you that is not the case. Commissioner, can you... I'm doing everything possible to 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 nail down that risk. So, what so you can't respect for you're a copper. You can't, can you, Commissioner? I can't 100 percent. No. So, and that's deeply upsetting, isn't it? Now, what we're doing is we've we're revetting all of our officers. We're checking every officer against all the national databases. We're looking back at thousands of um, previous cases to make sure that we've looked at them properly. I'm suspending more officers. I'm sacking more officers. So I'm doing everything that those cases illustrated we failed on in the past to find anybody in this organisation who presents any risk to the public and sort them out immediately. And I've been pushing the Home Secretary and the Prime Minister for rapid changes to police regulations to enable me to more robustly deal with this. Can you give us a context? How many officers have been reported? How many officers have been suspended? The level of work you and your colleagues are getting through? Um, uh, some of the numbers I'm seeing in these territory are as much as doubling the prettiness of long-term rates. I'm going to do a full report and update on this at the end of the month with all so, the data on the work we've done over the last three months. Sorry, doubling the long-term rate. I'm so sorry, does that mean 200, 300? I'm confused. I, I, I'm going to give the detailed numbers at the end of the month. We are in the, the hundreds. The, the reason I say, the reason I say that, uh, Nick, is yep. that um, I commissioned this work sort of um, three months ago. It's a massive amount of work to revet all the organisation to all of this, and my team are working like fury to get the work completed by the end of the month, and that's why I want to wait till then to give the exact numbers. OK, but we're talking hundreds last year on this. Yeah, okay, yeah the, the, the numbers per year will be, will be of that, that order, yes. OK, when we spoke, when the interim report was published, Sir Mark, in October, 
Yes. You conceded that you'd shed a tear because of the passion you're putting into the job of what you'd had to read. What was your reaction last night, yesterday, whenever you were given the report? I, I've been sort of digesting different drafts of the report for two or three weeks, and it, it, it really hurts to read it when you care about the service. I've been in policing, um, except for the last four years, for all my adult life, and I am um, in different forces around the country, and I care deeply about it, and I care deeply about our people and about the public of London, and we're letting them down so badly, and I've apologised for that, and I, I, I repeated that apology yesterday. What it, jumped out at you most? Um, it's the personal testimonies of officers, and I, I think I said when I spoke to you before, Nick, I've had officers sat in my office talking about their poor experiences and confiding in me, and, and um, Dane Lim Lim-Lones, my deputies, had the same. And those, those stories are, hurt, are really hurt, um, but they are also galvanising. They double our resolve. We are going to see that these reforms, Londoners need a successful police force. And regardless of the tens of thousands of good people I've got, we're not doing well enough at the moment, but we're all determined to do better. And if Londoners can work with us, we can succeed. You're absolutely right. You are a policeman down to your boots. You have served in different forces, but it's worth reminding listeners you did seven years in a very yes. senior role at the Met until, as I recall, 2018. Um, this obviously is a force you've worked very closely with. You never witnessed anything like this in your time in the Met as a senior officer. No, I've always, I've always been absolutely... Um, ruthless on standards and discipline and uh, all the panels I've chaired I've been very tough on. Um, so you're an ace, but, you're an assistant commissioner and you didn't know this was going on with the blokes and women who were working around you. Just some of my listeners are finding that difficult to digest, Commissioner. I, I, I understand that. I, most of my attention when I was in the Met, I was, I was sort of wrestling with terrorism and terrorists. But I, I, I should have seen in the organisation, we all should have seen more. We all, have to, we all have to reflect as leaders over decades in policing despite the positive changes we've been making, why haven't we seen the depth of these issues? Um, and I can spend a long time looking back, but I think the most important thing now is, today, is the reforms that we're putting in place. We have a plan, we've put a plan in place, we're making st changes already, and Louise Casey's recommendations will inform that plan and make us um, all the more bold and determined. One of the recommendations or suggestions, Commissioner, is that if there isn't change brought about in five years, the force could effectively be axed or broken up. Your reaction to that? London's a big complex city. It's always going to have a big complex organisation. If you break it up, um, that won't be to the benefit of London. The answer to this problem is change, is dramatic change, is sorting out the people who shouldn't be in the organisation, um, building the positive culture and team of those who are here, and organising ourselves better for the people of London, doing a better job for victims of uh, for, for victims of crime, such as the violence against women and girls perpetrated by male predators, the sort of things Louise calls out in her report. We're making improvements on that day after day, and Londoners will see those improvements month after month. Last couple of questions. An LBC exclusive poll early this month found a le record low level of trust in the force, and I spoke at that point with David Nowd, Lord Blunkett. One of his suggestions that jumped out at me was an active drive to recruit more female officers. He felt that that could be quite a benefit to the force. Your reaction to that? Yeah, I, I don't disagree with um, David's comments there. Uh, we have been recruiting more uh, female officers. We've tipped past 30%, um, I think, in the last year of our, of our ranks. And so it's going in the right direction. Um, of course, I'd like it to be 50%, but it is going in the right direction. I think when we think about diversity in policing, it's too often talked about from just a representative perspective. The most important thing for me is to be as effective as possible. The best organisations in the world, private sector or public sector, are the ones with diverse teams because the last thing you want is groupthink. You want people who have different backgrounds, different understandings, different expertise who come together. And it's that diversity that will help us succeed. Uh, last one, really. Um, two teams you'll know well, MO19, the Specialist Firearms Command, and the Parliamentary and Diplomatic Protection Unit seem to be operating protect effectively as units unto themselves. They are ordering kit that is not required uh, and effectively their own units. Why? So, um, yes, Baroness Casey calls out the culture in our firearms units and it's deeply concerning what she reports. Um, we've, we've put new leadership in place in, in the Parliamentary Diplomatic um, Command. We're going to do big radical reforms in that area. 
These, what, um, what, what do you mean by radical reforms, Commissioner? Um, so uh, we're going to increase the turnover, get lots of new younger officers in there, change their where they're working. Um, we've got authority from Parliament to fund the diplomatic protection, to put more super, more sergeants in there to change the culture. Um, so we're making multiple changes. But these must be units you knew well as AC in your previous role. You must have known what was going on with these blokes. And I say blokes deliberately because it seems it's a very blokey culture. Uh, so... Uh, I've tackled issues in those environments. They do some fantastic operations. There are some great people there who are going out confronting dangerous people. I agree. People, very brave. Very brave. Hunters. I accept that. And, and they're Absolutely. very, very people. And so th that's the challenge here, isn't it? That on the one hand, you've got teams with very brave people who are dedicated, who do things that 99% of us wouldn't do but, in terms of protecting London. But within that, we've got some toxic culture as well. And we need to support the brave and the best and rid ourselves of those toxic individuals who are damaging their reputation. But they're buying unusable night vision goggles and tomahawk axes, and meanwhile a fridge is allowed to break down that's got crucial samples from rape cases in it. How come they got the loot and the others didn't? Yeah, so, and that's one of the points that um, Louise Casey makes, is that um, the day-to-day -day service to Londoners isn't getting the resource levels that sometimes the specialist units do and myself and my deputy Leon Owens we're resolved to tackle that and we're confronting that day in and day out. In terms of the particular cases and allegations within and uh, within Louise Casey's report she's pulling together the evidence that has been provided to her anonymously and she's um, looking to try and give us the evidence that she has so that we can investigate any cases and deal with those individuals. Lastly, I'll let you crack on after this question. Next time we speak, whenever it might be, how will we know, how can we, Londoners, how indeed can your colleagues, the men and women who are brave enough to pull on their uniforms today and go out and do the job, how will they know that the Governor's making progress? Commissioner. So I think there's, there's two, um, two things I would talk about here. One is the service to Londoners and how that improves day in and day out. So... For example, our improving of, um, of solving rape cases would be one example of that, or our improving of our response to 999 calls. Um, and then on the culture and standards issues, the core part of that, and the first piece for me, is to clear the ground from under my feet of those individuals who shouldn't be here. So they're going to see more of their colleagues leaving the organisation. And they will welcome that, because these are the individuals who they know let them down. And, and, and that review of numbers you said will come later... Did you say later this year or in the spring? At the end of the month. End of the month, end of the month you're going to reveal yes. how many people have gone and whatever the numbers yeah, come yeah. out then. Exactly. Maybe we can book another appearance if you have time. I know you have to go now. Grateful for your time, Commissioner of the Met, Sir Mark Rowley, appearing here on LBC 747 News Headlines, Thomas Watts. The Met Police Commissioner, Sir Mark Rowley, has told Nick he is determined to reform the UK's largest force. It's after a review by Baroness Casey found deep-seated racism, misogyny and homophobia at Scotland Yard. Also today, Brexit supporting MPs are set to deliver their verdict on the latest plans for Northern Ireland trade. LBC weather, a mixture of bright spells and showers for most, a high of 15 Celsius. LBC Travel, I'm Joanne Webb.